everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with yet again another video where we're going to be covering some WWE action figures, and it's another discussion topic for you guys. We're going to be discussing overrated WWE action figures, specifically elites or ultimates. I'm not going to get into the basics. I would probably say every basic is overrated because as good as the head sculpt is, the rest of it from the neck down is pretty much useless. Anyways, guys, we're going to be diving into this, and I'm just going to be naming some overrated WWE figures, at least in my opinion. And just because a figure's on this list doesn't necessarily mean that it sucks or that I hate it or that I don't want it or that you shouldn't get it. It's just that I take, uh, you know, kind of like put a finger on the pulse here of the community, see how they feel about the figure, and then compare it to what I think about it and kind of like how good it is in terms of different things and kind of add all that up to the formula and get if it's overrated or not. All Elite Bebe shirt on, you know, had to had to rep the new Adam Cole shirt. However, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to get into it. You guys know I like breaking down stuff, explaining it, and all those different things with the countdowns and all of that. And I probably could have spent a lot more time on this list and made a, a massive list, I'm sure, if I put a huge amount of time in it. But I did spend, uh, I'd say, a few hours putting together this list, and I, I felt pretty good about it. So let's go ahead and dive in with MDT's most overrated WWE action figures, or wrestling figures, I guess. Starting out at the top, guys, let's go ahead and knock out a couple Ultimate Editions. We'll go ahead and get those out of the way here. So with the Ultimate Editions, man, starting out the list, I'm going to go with this year's San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, and I'm going to go with the Ultimate Edition Sergeant Slaughter. Now, don't get me wrong, I think it's a really good figure. I think it's solid. I think it's great, but I think that because it was the SDCC exclusive and it had the custom packaging and all of these things, I think a lot of people kind of rate it a little bit higher than they should, and I don't know what it is. I, I, I just feel like it got a little bit too much love, and while the packaging is very nice and I, I love the packaging, I love how you know you can reseal it without damaging the packaging. I like how they did the chase figure. I like how they did all of these different things. I will say that we have to take it into consideration when we look at a loose figure just straight up. It's not bad. It is a WWE Ultimate, so his ab crunch is not that good. His arms are also very, very massive, and that kind of put me away. My butterfly joints were quite loose, and I don't know. I just think that it was a bit overrated. I think because it was the San Diego Comic Con exclusive, and because it played in the nostalgia and had that epic packaging, it gets a little bit more love than maybe it should as a standalone figure. And then the other Ultimate that I wanted to cover is the Ultimate Edition Fiend. We've covered it multiple times on the channel. Just isn't my favorite Ultimate Edition, you know, you got the rubber instead of the cloth jacket that I think would have looked really good over the double jointed arms and all of those different things. You guys know that he looks a bit stumpy. He has a painted on belt instead of a sculpted belt. The legs again are very frumpy and dumpy and lumpy and all those crumpy dump bullsh that you could say. And so Ultimate Edition Fiend has to go on my list. I just couldn't not put him on there. So that's a couple overrated Ultimates in my opinion. Getting into some Elite figures guys. I'm going with the Elite 54 Charlotte figure. This figure right here man. This figure got a absolute ton of praise and I don't even remember why it got so much praise. I think it's just because of the, the robe. And while the robe is nice, the head sculpt was oversized and it was not very poseable. It was actually very... I'd say the Ultimate Edition crushes the Elite 54 and I try to put my mindset in that, you know, in that universe there, but I never liked the figure. It, again, it was very stiff. Head sculpt was oversized. I even switched the head sculpt and people were like, what are you doing? I didn't like the head sculpt. It was just one of those figures that got a ton of praise. They were like, best women's figure ever and all these different things. I wasn't, I wasn't on that train. Figure was overrated. Next up, guys, we have Elite Series 47 AJ Styles. You're probably like, well, what the hell is this, Brad? Yes, it is an older figure, but I remember when the figure first dropped. I never really liked the way the figure looked, but on Amazon, bro, this figure sold out so many times in a row. I remember the, like the craziness that people were trying to get it on ringside. It sold out and Amazon is sold out. Like everybody wanted this Elite 47 AJ Styles. It didn't have knee pads on there. Very plain Jane figure. The head, while it was a solid head sculpt, I, th I actually do like the head sculpt on this figure. I just felt like his proportions have always been off and that was the one that started it all for me. And it just, it's an overrated figure. It just wasn't as good as people made it out to be. It was because it was AJ Styles. It was because it was all we had and it was because we just accepted it for what it was when it's just it's just not that good man i'd really love to see them do like a perfect ultimate edition aj styles and give us a great torso and like perfect proportions and just nail that thing so i just don't have to ever look at an ugly aj again i can just get a really good ultimate and that would be the end of it but the first ever 
AJ Styles just wasn't, it didn't manage to live up to the hype that everybody placed on it. Next up, guys, is Elite Series 16, Kevin Nash. Never understood the hype of this figure outside, like, of course, people love it. It's the Outsiders. You got Kevin Nash there, obviously. Legs are very stiff, and the head sculpt was never the best for me. This figure goes for astronomical prices, and it's probably because it was one of the only Kevin Nashes, but at the end of the day, it just wasn't, it just wasn't, uh, I wasn't on that hype train, man. Just wasn't a figure that I necessarily loved. You, I guess you could throw Diesel in there, but I would say specifically the Kevin Nash figure. The Diesel is pretty even with it, but I don't know. Elite 16 Nash, it was always like so sought after, so rare, so like coveted, and I just never really saw that in the figure. I didn't place that kind of value on it, and I felt like it was overrated, man. I just was like, eh, it's, it's not bad, but it's not one that is just like breaking the, the you know, shattering the figure world, if you will. Next up is pretty controversial. I get it every single time I talk about it, but the Elite 70 Finn Balor figure. I know people are like losing their John Brown minds, Brad, but this figure was super disappointing for me when we knew that we were getting the Jack the Ripper NXT Finn Balor. You guys know I'm a massive Finn Balor fan, so it's not coming from a place of hate or anything like that, man. I love Finn Balor. Probably one of my favorite performers in all of wrestling, but the red was too dark on this figure. The head sculpt was off on this figure. A lot of the paint around the face was misprinted and it had like too much black on it over the red. There, was, there wasn't a lot of details. It was just black over red and red over black. It didn't have a lot of fades or anything like that. The back paint looks fantastic, but I felt like the teeth design wasn't very accurate. Hat wasn't the right color. Just wasn't, just wasn't complete. You know, the accuracy just wasn't there with this figure and it pained me, man, because I wanted that figure so bad. I remember ordering it. I was so excited for it. And then when I got it, I was like, man, ugh, God, ugh. So I was very disappointed with that one, man. That really, that one hurt me a lot. Elite 70 Finn Balor was just one that I wanted to be so good and it could have been so good, but you have to repaint it. And just honestly, it just, it just really hurt my feelings, man. Overrated figure. Everybody praises it, but nah, not for me, Brad. I like the figure, but it could have been so much better. Next up, guys, we have the Elite 66 Bludgeon Brothers, man. These head sculpts are fantastic. I know, like, I, I understand. They're fan freaking tastic. Like, they're, they're excellent head sculpts. I use them every single pick fit episode of Vindication. I think that uh, they're two of the better head sculpts. Like, I love the Eric Rowan looks just like him, and I love the Luke Harper looks just like him. R.I.P. to the legend. Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, great looking figures, great details, but they move terrible. They are terrible, terrible legs, very heavy legs, and like wide. And I know it, like, I get, like, I don't know, the figure didn't, the way they looked in that Bludgeon Brothers get up and how it translated to the figure was just, I don't know, man, it just didn't work for whatever reason, for me at least. And everybody always loved these figures, at least they, they loved their details and stuff like that. And yeah, they do have great details, but you're only as good as, like, for me, your figure is only as good as how you move, really. Like, if you can't move the figure around, it doesn't really matter how good you look. Like, I can make a sick-ass custom, and the custom can look great, but if I can't move it around and at least pose it a little bit, man, then what's the, what's the use? Might as well get a statue, you know? You're an action figure. You gotta be able to move, and that's a big deal to me. Let me know if you feel the same way, but Bludgeon Brothers had to go on the list, even though their head sculpts are great. Everybody praised those figures and praised their details when the truth was they weren't as good as uh, as the, as advertised. Coming up on the last two on my list here. Now, to be fair, probably put some more AEW figures on here, but we'll get into that in just a moment when we cover the AEW figure. But I'm going with the last WWE Elite I have, guys, is Elite 43 Kevin Owens. This figure is just just Uggs, man. This figure is Uggs. I, I mean, I guess, I don't know if you can really count this because, like, obviously head sculpts and stuff are going to get better as we go, but that first head sculpt on that Elite KO was not good. I didn't like it at all, and when it first got released, I was super on the hype train because you guys know I'm a huge Kevin Owens fan, and I used to defend that figure. As soon as it released, I think I paid, like, $26 from ringside or something like that for it, and I was like, oh, this figure's amazing. It's Kevin Owens. I got him in figure form, but it's kind of like the AJ Styles, you know? It's just like, why did we think that was good? Arms were like this big, couldn't even ab crunch. I mean, he still can't ab crunch, but at least his arms aren't gigantic. And the head sculpt didn't look like him, man. Head sculpt didn't look like him. Even the basic head sculpts that they were releasing around that time didn't look like him. Everybody used to praise those head sculpts. Oh, I love this KO head sculpt. It looks god awful. It looks bad. It's not good. Anyways, the last figure on the list, guys, is going to be AEW Unrivaled Collection Series 2 Mox. This figure looks incredible, but man, oh man, does it have its issues. First of all, it's nine foot seven. 
It's nine foot seven. It's like as tall as the Undertaker. The upper torso super loose. Legs after you pose them twice, they're super loose. It's such a beautiful looking figure, man. And I guess I could add Luchasaurus on here. I didn't want to do Luchasaurus again though. I, I wanted to give him a break over there. He knows how terribly disappointing he is. He's a beautiful specimen of a figure, just like Moxley. He looks beautiful, but why? Why can't he move? Or he can move. He just he turns into a freaking just jello after a couple poses. I think Pentagon does the same thing. I haven't had any issues with Darby Allen or Kenny or some of those guys that I pose around. But I have had issues with others, and I could have probably put some other AEW figures over here, but I felt like the Mox deserved it with the massive height, and everybody praises that figure, so I felt like it was pretty good there, so... That's my overrated wrestling figures or WWE or AEW or whatever the hell you want to say, man. That pretty much wraps up my overrated figures or the figures that's the most overrated to me in my personal opinion. What is an overrated action figure or overrated WWE Elite, Ultimate, AEW, and Rival, man? Let me know down in the comment section below, man. But I'm getting the hell out of here. I also have some inquiries. Like, there's some stuff that I'm looking for for my collection that I, like, I don't know why, but I have gotten off on a terrible, like, I really, really, really want to start, like, a big mock collection now, like, and I hate myself for it, but... But I feel like I'm in trouble now, Brad. I guess may maybe I can do that in a separate video of figures I'm looking for, mock and loose. But thanks so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know some overrated figures down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys, And I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line like uh, the crowd that praised the hell out of that, uh, well, I guess, every figure on the list, huh? You crossed the line. I've been